ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जाय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायशो नित्यम भागवत सेवया भागवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टकी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो वन चैप्टर सिक्सटीन टेक्स्ट नंबर फाइव चैप्टर एंटाइटल हाउ महाराज हाउ परीक्षित रिसीव द एज ऑफ कली सो आई बी जस्ट रिसाइटिंग द वर्स द ट्रांसलेशन एंड द पर्पट देर पाउ शव न कच आई एम आस्ट टू जस्ट रिसाइट द वर्स स्ट्रेट अवे कस्या है तो निज ग्राह कलिम दिग्विजय नृप नृदेव चिन्ह दृक्शूद्र कौसौ गम्य पदाने तत्कता महाभाग यदि कृष्ण कथाश्रय Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Translation. Shonaka Rishi inquired, Why did Maharaj Parikshit simply punish him, since he was the lowest of the shudras, having dressed as a king, and having struck a cow with his leg? Please describe all these incidents. if they relate to the topics of lord krishna purport shonaka and the rishis were astonished to hear that a pious maharaj parikshit simply punished the culprit and did not kill him this suggests that a pious king like maharaj parikshit should have at once killed an offender who wanted to cheat the public by dressing like a king and at the same time daring to insult the purest of animals a cow the rishis in those days however could not even imagine that in the advanced days of the age of kali the lowest of the shudras will be elected as administrators and will open organized slaughter houses for killing cows anyway although hearing about a shudraka who was a cheat and the insulter of a cow was not very interesting to the great rishis they nevertheless wanted to hear about it to see if the event had any connection with lord krishna they were simply interested in the topics of lord krishna for anything that is doubted with the narration of krishna is worth hearing there are many topics in the bhagavatam about sociology politics economics cultural affairs etc but all of them are in relation with krishna and therefore all of them are worth hearing krishna is a purifying ingredient in all matters regardless of what they are in the mundane world everything is impure due to its being a product of the three mundane qualities the purifying agent however is krishna ओम ज्ञानतिमीरंदनाशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यामनोष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरुन्वैष्णवांश्रीपा 
ಸಾಗರ ಜಾತ ಸಹಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗಣ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಕಾಂತ ಶ್ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನೋ ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತಾಂ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ್ ಶಿವಾಸತಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಶೌನಕ ಉಚ ಕಸ್ಯ ಹೇತೋರ್ ನಿಜಗ್ರಹ ಕಲೀಂ ದಿಗ್ವಿಜಯ ನೃಪ ಗ್ರೀದೇವ ಚಿನ್ನ ದೃಕ್ ಶೂದ್ರ ಹೋಸೌ ಗಾಂಭ್ಯ ಪದಾಹನೆ ತತ್ ಕಥಯತ ಮಹಾಭಾಗ ಯದಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕಥಾಶ್ರಯ ಶೌನಕ ಶಿ ಇನ್ಕ್ವಾಯರ್ಡ್ ವೈ ಡಿಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಪನಿಷ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಲೋವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶೂದ್ರಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಡ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಅ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ a cow with his leg please describe all these incidents if they relate to the topics of lord krishna so i welcome all of you for this sunday feast program here uh, we are just discussing the 16th chapter from the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam this uh, topic is chapter is entitled how parikshit received the age of kali and here shavanakrishi is enquiring as to why parikshit did not kill that kali why only he punished him so the answer to that will be coming in the subsequent chapters uh, and the verses but very important to understand and note here is that he is also asking one more thing please describe all these incidents if they relate to the topics of krishna so shila prabhupada in the purport mentions that you know the devotees are interested only if the topics are related to krishna otherwise they are not at all interested in anything else and uh, that is the purpose of the international society for krishna consciousness that we have we come together we hear about topics related to krishna and his devotees shila prabhupada said krishna consciousness so ultimately we all need to be conscious of krishna at every moment of our lives right right now we are engaged in so many other topics which are irrelevant for us we just while away our time engaging in so many unnecessary activities which sometimes may not be really helpful for us 
we just get carried away but here if you hear about the lord and his activities by hearing you know and sitting in the classes like this then a time will come when we'll all be able to hear about krishna on a regular basis we'll remember about him you know moment by moment so here shila propal is mentioning that our purpose is just to hear topics about krishna so here shaunakarishi is asking ki please tell me if they are if they are related to krishna we want to know about it you know though the matter appears to be very ordinary but because it's concerning krishna the uh, rishis are interested to hear shila propad at one place he mentioned that you know how uh, any activities we do we just some other the do those activities and see that we connect those things with krishna even if may appear to be mundane but if it's connected to krishna then it becomes krishnaist otherwise the things which we can engage in krishna's service and if you don't do that then you can be considered as falgu vairagya ha huh? prapankichate buddhya hari sambandha vastuna if anything connected to krishna if you're not using it mumukshugi parityago falgu vairagya katyate it is called as falgu vairagya it's called as artificial renunciation then shila propad goes on to mention that how in our moment we use everything connected to krishna we use even the microphone when he is giving a lecture he says the microphone may appear very ordinary but because this is used to preach the glories of the lord then this becomes spiritual so anything in this world when we connect things to krishna then that particular activity gets energized and uh, you know it becomes spiritual so there's nothing in this world that we just can say that this is material can be used in krishna's service and can be made spiritual i was uh, uh in mayapur some few months back and uh, i had an opportunity to be with uh, his grace janani was prabhu and uh, when i went to his room you know he made me sit and then he went to do very deep meditation very quiet moment and in his room there was a television and he was watching the live telecast of the darshan of shri shri radha madhav he was looking at it and then afterwards he looked at me and he said that when radharani holds her hand like this and krishna is standing next to radharani he says it may be possible that krishna may leave radharani and go away you know krishna may leave radharani and go away and then he looked at me he said at shishi radha gopinath mandir chopati he says radharani has both the hands pointing towards krishna he says if radharani has one hand also pointing towards krishna he says krishna cannot say no what to skip speak of if radharani has both the hands pointing towards krishna krishna cannot refuse so he was uh, just speaking about it and uh, just that particular morning i was having a tour of the temple of vedic planetarium tovp and just a thought came a very you know absurd thought came in my mind i said why is such a big temple built unnecessarily when we already have a you know temple existing i knew that shilapur wanted a big temple very adbhut mandir all this was there but i was just thinking 
you know, since you already have so many people are coming still, and then why we need to... So I was just thinking like this. And in the evening, when this conversation is taking place, after a few moments of silence, he just uh, looked at me and said, she, she, Radha Madhava are very beautiful. But when they go to this TVVP, they will make the TVVP very beautiful. They will make TVVP beautiful. Now this was something like it was a revelation to me. I was just, I, you know, normally what we think is that you know, we have a big temple and then we will install Radha Krishna and that's all. He said that when Radha Madhava moved to this new place, they will make the TVVP beautiful. So then I just shared with my wife and she said, yes, that is Pran. It's a Pran Shakti. So when the deities go to the place, then they energize the entire place and the entire place looks very beautiful. So that reminded me of a verse from the Shastra. We all know this verse. Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya Jati Shastra Japa tapa apranasya eva dhyasya mandanam lokaranjanam. This is one of the first verses which I heard and it appealed to me. You know, Bhagavad Bhakti Inasya. If you are devoid of any bhakti, Bhagavad Bhakti Inasya. Jati Shasa Japa tapa. Maybe like, you know, you may be a very great scholar, you may be of a high uh, birth. Japa tapa, you may be very austere in your tapasya, you may do everything. But it's all like a decoration on a dead body. So you may decorate a wonderful body. Probably that body may be the most beautiful body of the entire creation. The, maybe the Miss Universe or Mrs. Universe or Mr. Universe, whatever it may be. Maybe the most beautiful actress in town. The moment that life force goes out that place, you would not like to go near that person. You would not like to embrace. Even though that person may be the most beautiful and the most attractive, you don't like to go near that. So, you know, mandanam lokaranjanam. So I was just thinking of this particular verse and then it struck me. He said, what makes the thing beautiful? It is because of the life force within, you know, the prana shakti. What makes this temple beautiful? It's because Shishirada Gopinath are being taken care of very nicely. There is someone who has put his prana shakti here in this place. That's the reason why this place is beautiful. There is, there are someone, there are devotees who are putting their life, heart and soul to make this, you know, or to please Shishi Radha Gopinath. That's the reason why uh, this temple looks very attractive. You remove Shishi Radha Gopinath from here, then this will be just like a, another museum where people will come and only see the wonderful, you know, uh, design, architecture here. But devotees come here, devotees come here because Shishi Radha Gopinath are being taken care of very nicely and they in turn make the entire place environment energized. I was just remembering about Sridham Mayapur also. You know why Sridham Mayapur is very attractive? Because the personalities like Jananias Prabhu, Panka Jangari Prabhu, all these people have spent years through thick and thin they have been serving the deities. You know, whatever may be hardships, everything they had gone through. 30 years, they never stepped out of Shida Mayapur. In 2001, when they first came to Chopati, that's the time when they left actually Shida Mayapur. For 30 years, they had gone through so many difficulties. But through all this, they were serving, wanted to please their Lordship, Shishirada Madhav, Shishinar Singh Dev, and that's the reason why that place is very attractive. And subsequently, of course, the legacy continues that devotees are there who take care of those deities, take care of you know, their deities, take care of all the wonderful activities over there. So I just am giving an example, but 
what makes a place attractive is because it's connected to some devotees who are given or who have given their life and soul to that particular place. She would be dham. Why? Why it's attractive? Yes. There's a great Acharya, Shripad Madhvacharya, who, you know, served Prinaya mo vasudevam. This is the prayer we always, Madhvacharya would sing when he would be there in front of uh, Bala Krishna. You know, and he served those deities. And because of which, that place becomes very attractive. There's a place called as Kanakana Kindi, where Kanaka Das, who was a Shudra by birth, he was not allowed to come also in the temple, but he was trying to see whether he can take a darshan of the Lord from inside, from outside. And so much intense was his desire to have the darshan that the, you know, the Lord turned and faced Kanaka Das. So now the system is that you cannot take darshan now from the front entrance, it's closed. And the system is that as soon as you come to Urpi Dham, you just have darshan through the window. It's called as Kanakana Kindi. You have darshan of the Lord first through the window and then you enter the temple, you know. So that becomes, you know, a, a, a legacy over there. So if you see any place, you know, looks wonderful, looks attractive because there's a Krishna factor there. Krishna is taken care of by the devotees very nicely and that particular environment becomes completely live. You know, on a personal level, if you see that, you know, what makes our activities very attractive to others. When we put our life and soul into what we do, then that becomes attractive. What we do is not the one which will attract others. What we do, how we do. You know, whether we do our personal sadhana, japa, or whether we hear, whatever in activities we do, are we really putting our life and soul into the whole thing? And if you do that, then whatever activities we do, that becomes pleasing and attractive. What makes the great devotees attracted to us because of their intensity? because of their full, you know, absorption into the uh, activities that they perform. And that's the reason why that particular activity of theirs becomes very attractive and pleasing to us. You know, when we are talking about uh, Srila Prabhupada, like Srila Prabhupada went to the West, preached Krishna consciousness. What attracted Shila, the people to Srila Prabhupada? because of his intensity, because of his total absorption in serving the Lord, in serving his Guru. And that really attracted people. Others, an old man of 70 going to the West, what can he attract? <laughs> you cannot, you cannot, a 70 year old man, what can he attract a 20 year old? That time, there was a revolution. No, people in the 20s, they said, we will never accept anyone who is above 40, don't listen to them. That was a thing going on. And here you find that, you know, Srila Prabhupada just does something and uh, the devotees get, people get attracted. Somebody becomes a devotee, just Srila Prabhupada drinking water. We drink so many times, nobody gets attracted to us. <laughs> huh? Somebody gets attracted by just, you know, Srila Prabhupada, seeing Srila Prabhupada spitting a, you know, orange seed and the seed going right into the dustbin. Now that may seem very ordinary, but because Srila Prabhupada has that Krishna factor to the fullest, 100% Krishna factor. So whatever he does becomes attractive. You know, what he speaks attracts. What he does with others, how he interacts with others attracts. Like yesterday's drama was very wonderful, the Gopal's Garden children, where the 12 Mahajans, how 
they very nicely connected that how Srila Prabhupada was doing all the activities of those 12 Mahajans. You know? And then attracted everyone. People just got attracted. They never knew what is Krishna, who is Krishna. They never have heard about Krishna. But the wonderful paintings that we see here are being painted by those who never knew who Krishna is. And Srila Papa said they are the windows to the spiritual world. You know? Somebody who did not know how to cook, like yesterday, Yamuna Mataji. You know? She entered into the kitchen first time with a cigarette in her hand. He says, No, you should not smoke. <laughs> Go outside. Wash your hands. And then she becomes the greatest cook. She has her own cookbook with her. So what is it that, you know, transforms these lives when they come in contact? You know, it's a Krishna factor. Like Srila Prabhupada, when he walked across this planet Earth, you know, like the entire planet was fully Krishnaized. The Hare Krishna explosion, as we can say, you know, so much so that Tamar Krishna Maharaj said, Prabhupada, let's conquer the whole world. We will be able to do it in 18 days. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada. You know, that was the way it was happening. You know, so Srila Prabhupada was that personality who walked across this planet, you know, and he established temples all over the world. All over the world, the Radha Krishna deities, you know, engaged the devotees in uh, deity worship, book distribution, and so many other activities. And when he engaged them in all these wonderful activities, people got connected to Krishna. Anywhere you go to the place, wherever there are centers, you'll always find the same standards of deity worship have been followed. The same types of the say, morning program is being there. You actually feel sheltered when you go to this place. You feel that you are at home when you are there. You know, go at 4.30, there will be Mangal Arati, there will be Japa session, there will be, you know, Bhagavatam. Now, sometimes surprising, how is it that possible that we can experience all these things, you know? Nobody is there with a cane in a hand, say, Abhi Karo, just follow this, you know? Naturally, we are following. Everywhere, duties are following this particular system. You know, the Krishna factor is there. Srila Prabhupada said, I am your well-wisher, ever well-wisher, ever well-wisher. And uh, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we are all here. It brought tears to our eyes when we saw that drama. You know, just what Srila Prabhupada has done for us, you know, Nobody has done it. The Krishna factor, you know. So when we talk about such personalities, you know, actually it's connected to Krishna, then we also become purified. We also, uh, you know, advance. We also progress by hearing. Just, you know, uh, I just would like to uh, bring about this particular chapter, the Bombay chapter of Shiloh Prabhupada's. Uh, very apt today because uh, it's Makar Sankranti. And uh, this is very auspicious for all of us, where especially Maharashtra, they give Tilgul to everyone, say Tilgul Gyan Godu Godu Bola. So it's said that, you know, this is a time when the sun enters into Makar Rashi. You know, Whenever the sun enters from one planet, Rashi to the other is called Sankranti. So it's Makar Sankranti. And very much because the sun enters the northern hemisphere, goes to the Uttarayan. And uh, during this time, harvesting takes place. All auspicious things are being uh, experienced. So it's a good sign. For the next six months, then the sun is there and then again goes to the southern hemisphere. So Makar Sankranti is very auspicious for all of us. And on this particular day, the Jew temple was inaugurated in 1998. And, sorry, 1978, 1978, 46, uh, 45 years, 46 years ago, uh, 46 years. So today at this moment, they are celebrating in Jew. But 14th of Jan was a Makar Sankranti. 
So this year it is like 14th evening it starts and 15th. So we celebrate on the 15th of Jan, the Makar Sankranti day. So Giriraj Maharaj is over there. He is the one who Srila Prabhupada mentions that Bombay means Giriraj. And Giriraj means Bombay. You know, like means so much connected he was to the Bombay project. And why, why so much of emphasis on the Bombay project? Srila Prabhupada has never spent so many days in other parts of the world during his 11 years of preaching as much as he spent in Bombay. 553 days altogether. 553 days he has spent in Bombay. You know, elsewhere he would just entrust someone to carry on. Maybe like, you know, buy some old church, buy some old property and then so convert into temple. And then make someone in charge of the place and say, okay, you carry on. And then Prabhupada would start preaching somewhere else. Like that. But here, Prabhupada had to personally be present and, you know, struggle so much to acquire this land. Acquire this land. Shilap, uh, Giriraj Maharaj has written this book, I will build you a temple. I recommend everyone should read this book. It's a very wonderful book. Once you start reading, uh, you will get engrossed because it's connected to Bombay. It's Bombay's. I never knew so many things, you know, only after I read, I came to know, uh, you know, how the whole Bombay project uh, started and how it continued on, you know. I wanted to speak a lot, but then we need to end in about 15 minutes. So I'll just cut it short. Srila Prabhupada, when he was in 1965, he just had a strong desire that he should have a temple. He was here in Bombay and he decided I should have a place here and uh, have a nice cultural center here, organize events and, um, you know, make people devotees. Because he said Bombay is like a, you know, gateway for spirituality. Anyone who comes to Bombay, you know, it's like people, whatever you do, people in the world will follow or at least in India they'll follow. So Srila Prabhupada went to the West, came back in 1970, and then when he came to 1970, then, you know, he never had a place here. But some of the other, you know, your first place, as Giraj Maharaj recollects, he says he stayed in Seksarya Bhavan, and uh, that's where he started meeting people. And then later on, slowly, then, you know, he uh, engaged so many of his disciples from the West to come and come here and help him out. And Giriraj Maharaj was one of them. And uh, then in 71, you know, he had a big uh, pandal program here with the help of Sham Sundar Prabhu. And uh, Giriraj Maharaj was also there to take care of the book stall over there. And uh, His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj attended a cross pandal, pandal program where Srila Prabhupada noticed him and made him sit next to him. But then after that, you know, things were happening. First, they were starting, started doing kirtans in Bombay because Srila Prabhupada said, okay, what you do over there, you do here also. So they would go to the beach and do kirtans. But then it was not giving a good response. So Srila Prabhupada said, we should do something else. You know, then he started with the life membership. And uh, the life membership program started. Hiraj Maharaj started meeting many and others also started meeting many known people, well-known people, influential people. And suddenly it so happened that, you know, like many of the devotees were contacting so many. And uh, one devotee, Tushta Krishna, happened to meet Mr. Nair. And uh, Mr. Nair told that, Ki, I have a property in Jew, so I want to give it to you all. And that's how we arranged a meeting. He wrote a letter. And that was in December, 1st of December. That's when he wrote a letter to Srila Prabhupada that I want to give this land to you. It's a 70 uh, acre land which I have. And uh, I can give you at a very cheap rate. So you please take it. And then Srila Prabhupada agreed to meet him. Later part of the month in December, he met him. And then agreement was done. And... Uh, 
it was very cheap 14 lakhs agreement and he said okay 2 lakhs downright 12 lakhs over period of time installments so 50,000 they paid immediately 50,000 when they moved to the place and then 1 lakh rupees once the agreement is done so once that was done Srila Papa said just go and move inside that property immediately get into that normally what would happen we would never go like that unless until the agreement is finished professor just move and then he engaged some two three of them like Narnaran Rishi Brahmanan Prabhu and others it was a marshy land and uh, they just with the help of the tenants there are tenants also staying in this place it was called as a Hare Krishna land because one disciple he said Prabhupada we have Disneyland so we should say something to this have gives us name so he said we'll give a Hare Krishna land name a Hare Krishna land you know so that's how the Hare Krishna land name came about and then it says that you know Prabhupada just they just started to clear off everything excavate make it flat and Srila Prabhupada was preaching but all throughout Srila Prabhupada was already thinking about what's happening in Bombay, you know, and uh, uh, things are happening okay, but Giriraj Maharaj recollects. He says that, you know, once Nair, he wanted him to meet the charity commissioner. And uh, when he was going to that place, he made him sit on the back seat. And he was sitting on one side, the Nair, and there was a lady who was sitting in the center. And next to him, he made Giriraj Maharaj sit there. So Giriraj Maharaj was sitting next to the lady. And all throughout it seemed the lady was trying to, you know, touch his leg, knees, coming to the thighs. So Giriraj Maharaj at that moment was saying that, you know, I would have given to it. But then I remembered, Srila Prabhupada loves us so much. Srila Prabhupada wants us to you know, maintain those principles in our lives. If I do this for moments, I could have, you know, I would have brought up a disgrace to him. I should not have given to it. And that's how he passed through that test. But then later on, it came to realize that Mr. Nair was trying to cheat them of the property, trying to somehow other the delay the uh, all the permissions and everything so that then later on according to agreement within six months of the agreement if you don't give the balance then the property becomes the agreement on null and void whatever the advance is given is gone so Srila Prabhupada was aware about all this is he said just move into that place and so many things were happening so many you know problems were coming up all. and Srila Prabhupada sent you know, one of his very trusted servant over there, Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. And Tamal Krishna Goswami went there. Sham Sundar Prabhu was also there. They were convinced that this place is not a place for us. So many problems are there. Tenants problems, other problems, so many problems. Things are getting delayed. And they were also thinking that why you want to buy a place, such a far place from here? We are all preaching on the south side. We have so many well wishers here, but we are planning to buy a place here, they were convinced that they should not. And on their own, they cancelled their agreement. Srila Prabhupada was out of India and Srila Prabhupada was trying to send, he seems to send Vishaka Mataji, you know, to Bombay to tell them not to cancel the agreement. But by the time she reached, the agreement was cancelled. And Srila Prabhupada wanted to hear from Tamal Krishna. He says, what happened? Did you cancel? Yes, Prabhupada. Sure. He says, cancel the agreement. He says, kept the phone down. He says, that means now it's finished. He thought, it's over. The Jew chapter. But some of the other, Srila Prabhupada found out some things that, you know, which says, or the agreement says that, you know, probably this is not the end of it. There is a possibility of getting this again within our fold. She said, Prabhupada wanted to just finish our matter immediately. Earlier it was like giving all the money in installments, let me finish this off. 
He somehow other had a meeting with Nair in Hyderabad. He called him over there and said, "You know, let's sit and discuss." So Mr. Nair said, "I want some more money because I have to pay taxes." He said, "Okay, I'll give you three lakh rupees more. Make a contract immediately." But somehow the other, you know, there was a delay in that also. Mr. Nair felt that he is getting carried away by the whole thing. He felt cheated. and then he came back to propad he said propad i just don't want to you know shila propad became so angry with him he says just do one thing pay me back my money or else just sign this contract he said no i don't want to you are all cheating me you are all fool you know rascals you just creating ruckus in this place because it due the people who are staying there also were against Nair got this opportunity. He said that ki I want this. People are around are not at all happy with you. All people you just go out. He said no, because Prabhupada actually got the deities of Radha Krishna also staying there, and he had promised the deities that please be here. I will build your temple. You know, and Shri Prabhupada that time that time told Mr. Nair that I want this place because the deities are staying there, and the devotees are staying there. So Nair said, "I will break the deities," and Shri Prabhupada became very angry. He says, "You cannot do that. They are the lords." And the meeting ended. And the next few days later on, they found that Mr. Nair has left the body. And Shri Prabhupada was very happy hearing that, <laughs> and he quoted a verse, and he says that. when a snake or a scorpion is killed even the saint is also very happy in it he says and he gave a reason why he was angry he says because this person said that i'll break the deities how can he say like that he cannot say like this that you can break the deities so he says i didn't want it to happen he says i could have taken i could have brought another land with all these issues i could have taken another property but i had promised shishi radha rasbere that i'll give you this place to stay that's why i want this place then mrs nair came to the picture and proper wanted to have a meeting with him some other other with the help of some devotees some people who were becoming a little favorable you know she actually you know orchestrated the entire demolition when mr nair left the body the next day the municipal corporation people just just demolished the roof and everything they had made a temporary structure you know shila papa said just get a life member just get to meet the influential people and that time the then uh, you know uh, person i don't know who is the main i don't remember that person's name but he contacted the chief political political party chief bal thakre he said that you should uh, you know help us out but if you if you allow that demolition take place your name will be spoiled and our hindu culture name will be spoiled so he called the municipal municipal commissioner municipal commissioner also was hand in hand with mrs snyer he says no no he says this bombay is mine whose use property is just understand this with that word with that sentence he withdrew and according to the law on friday they were supposed to get us you know demolition order done but some other that friday was the next day was a uh, of the court was closed within this two days with the help of a very very nice wonderful well wisher mr sethi he just uh, you know got that uh, place built again and then later on you know the judge gave a order that whatever is built is built you cannot just demolish this and later on he had a meeting with mrs nair you know he said i will take care of you help me out and somehow with all the negotiations you know ultimately shila propad could get that particular land at the same price with extra 85000 rupees because he was very good in negotiating also you know and he was very smart how the white amount how the black amount everything you know and shila propad after entire proceedings when finally in 1973 when uh, she signed the agreement 
Srila Prabhupada said it was a good fight. You know, I just had a good fight. And in on 14th of Jan, 1978, the temple of Jew, Shishya Radha Rasbiari, opened. So uh, this happened on the day of Makar Sankranti, and today is the day. So we see that you know now the temple is attracting so many people. Every day lakhs and lakhs of people are coming there and taking darshan of Shishi Radha Ras Bihari. So many activities are taking place through that particular center. Why? Because of the Krishna factor. That when we take care of the deities, when we do services that please the deities, serve them, the deity makes the whole temple, the activities, everything very attractive and beautiful. That's the Krishna factor. Hare Krishna, Hare Paul. Hare Krishna, so gives me great pleasure to introduce to all of you Yadubar Prabhu. He's been here many times, but I can see some new faces. So it will be good for us to know who he is. Actually, Prabhuji was doing a master's in photography in 1970. And the topic was origins of Krishna consciousness in India. And as part of that master's degree in photography, he came to India and he met Srila Prabhupada in 1970 in Surat. And he requested Srila Prabhupada that I would like to do some photograph of yours. So can I accompany you? And the original plan was that he'll travel with Srila Prabhupada, click a few photographs and then submit his master's thesis. And then he ended up traveling with Srila Prabhupada. Obviously, Srila Prabhupada was very kind enough and he gave him that permission. And instead of two months, he ended up traveling with him for two and a half years. And in 1971, in Kolkata, Prabhuji took initiation from his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. And after that, his main service, his and Mataji's service, Vishakha Mataji, both of them are illustrious disciples. So, so many Srila Prabhupada photographs that we have, very popular photographs of Srila Prabhupada, you can be assured, 90% of those photographs of Srila Prabhupada have been taken by either Vishakha Mataji or Yadubar Prabhu. So thousands and thousands of photographs. So while rest of the world and many other disciples were just busy appreciating Srila Prabhupada's presence, both of them had that understanding that we need to click photographs, we need to click movies, and we need to preserve Prabhupada's legacy. So. Uh, in 1974 then, he made a movie called The Hare Krishna People, The Hare Krishna World. It became very popular and Srila Prabhupada was really very happy the way they presented ISKCON to the whole world. And then after that, Srila Prabhupada requested Prabhuji to make many more movies. And then he contributed by making Srila Prabhupada your ever well-wisher. So it's a one hour short glimpse of Srila Prabhupada's life right from his childhood to his uh, days of preaching in America. So he's used his talent in a very amazing way to glorify pure devotee Srila Prabhupada. And special thanks to him and Mataji for always coming to Chaupati temple and bringing with them a lot of Prabhupada memories. So recently he has started a new project. Actually he is working on 47 hours of Srila Prabhupada's footage, video footage. And he has now taken a project to make it very HD quality, the highest quality that is available today. And he has a presentation for all of us. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. He was here for the two days drama festival also. 
and today he's here for making a presentation to all of us. So we'll very loudly welcome him from our hearts and express our gratitude to him for sharing uh, Prabhupada with us. Otherwise, there was no chance we would have got access to Srila Prabhupada. So we'll express our gratitude to Prabhu, Prabhuji by loudly chanting three times. Hari Bo! Hari Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for kind introduction. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm, I will show you a series of photos today. Maybe we could have the lights off. <clears throat> Many of these photos were taken from still movie frames. I, I asked a... Uh, I think it was a 15-year-old youth. Have you ever seen film? He said, no. <laughs> uh, film is, is an outdated medium to, to, to work in. Anyway, there's 24 frames a second in a movie. And uh, each of those still pictures tell a story. So we're going to tell you a little bit about our, our coming to Krishna consciousness. Ishaka Devi and myself through still pictures. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is the uh, Brooklyn Temple. I was a photographer. In fact, Ishaka Devi and I were both in photography school. We met each other there. We were boyfriend, girlfriend. And uh, in the summer of 1970, I got an assignment from the editor of Asia Magazine. I had my pictures in a photo agency in New York. And this man happened to see my pictures, and he happened also to be the editor of Asia Magazine, and he was interested, he was, he was uh, very fascinated by the Harinam Sankirtan downtown New York in Manhattan. So he called me up and he said, I would like you to do a story a uh, photographic essay printed in our magazine for the for the Asia magazine. So <clears throat> that was my first professional assignment and my last. <laughs> I was very attracted to Krishna consciousness from the moment I walked in the temple. And Vishaka Devi had the opposite reaction. Her name was Jean and I was John. She was an atheist, so that caused a bit of a, a strain in our relationship. <clears throat> anyway, um, we did that article, and then it came time for me to go back to, uh, to, back to school, both of us in school. And I was doing a master's degree in photography, so I decided, let me go to India, because I was very interested in Krishna consciousness. Let me go to India, meet Prabhupada, and do my master's thesis in photography on his travels in India. <clears throat> so I did that. I met Prabhupada in 19, in, in 1970, December, in Surat. I was unannounced. I didn't tell anyone I was coming. <laughs> but Prabhupada was in the midst of his World Sankirtan Party travels all over India. And I must say, the reaction of the Indian people was just amazing. <clears throat> because if you consider their, uh, the subjugation of their culture for hundreds of years by foreign rule, and all of a sudden Vaishnavas come to their country, you know, Tilak and Doti and Shaved Head, <laughs> they didn't know what to do. They were thrilled. And they're also curious, and you know, who are these people? We're, we're, how did they convert? How did, you know, what's happening here? <laughs> and uh, so anyway, <clears throat> this is, again, still pictures from movie frames. This is one of my favorite shots because it, it, it shows Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prediction that all, people of all different races will take up the banner of Saint Hadinam. Tamal Krishna Goswami, Dinanath Prabhu, Banu Swami, they're all there. And Prabhupada was our leader. So during that time, <clears throat> that, that Harinam party all over India started in August. Prabhupada called many of his early followers to come and join him. And they traveled by train all over India. 
wherever they would stop, just for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they would jump off the train and have Harinam Kirtan. And in that way, all over India, the word spread, because when you have Harinam Sankirtan, people will gather immediately. <laughs> so all over India, there was the, the news spread very quickly. Oops. <clears throat> this is Surat. The mayor of Surat said, even if Indira Gandhi, the prime minister, had come to their town, they would not have received the reception that Prabhupada received. It was incredible. The whole town turned out every day for Harinam Sankirtan. So this is yours truly at that time. <laughs> a crow amongst swans. But it was a photographer's dream because I was photographing the devotees on the Harinam party in New York City, and the reaction was just the opposite. <laughs> and so that, so the second night I was there, Prabhupada spoke at this gathering. They closed the street off, and thousands and thousands of people came. And every day, uh, the newspaper would print the roots of the Harinam party, where they would go in the city. And the people in that area would decorate their area of the city with, you know, so many decorations and you can see the eagerness of the people awaiting the Harinam party. And we could not go even a few yards without being stopped and garlands and sandalwood paste and drinks and arti to the Harinam party. So it's truly a, a, uh, a revolution, a spiritual revolution in India, a, a rebirth of Krishna consciousness. It's Malati Devi. You recognize her? Bravo would take his morning walks every morning. And Durla Prabhu is in the back <clears throat> leading the Boy Scouts in chanting Hare Krishna. And you can see that little camera on his wrist. That's a movie camera. So he was responsible for taking many of these movies. Prabhupada is speaking at a, very, a small Indian a village outside of Surat. And he was so animated during this lecture, I took many pictures of him and his gestures. This is my, I was taking black and white photographs for my thesis. And Prabhupada was tireless. This is Mangalarti in Prabhupada's room. This is Yamuna Devi standing. And he would, Prabhupada would often ask her to lead the kirtan. And Prabhupada was tireless. There'd be three or four, five engagements per day, preaching all the time. And the next place we visited was Allahabad for the Kumbh Mela. Prabhupada asked us to do three things at the Kumbh Mela. Distribute prasadam, Harinam Sankirtan, and deity worship. <clears throat> Probably this distribution of prasadam was by far the hardest because we had to cook. And there was very little wood to cook on an open fire. And these are some of the prominent devotees at that time. On the left with a drum is Madhavisa Prabhu. Srila Prabhupada called him the King of Kirtan. Great Kirtan leader. And Tamal Krishna Goswami there. Hansadutta Prabhu on the right. Gididha Swami with a blanket over his head. Do you recognize him in the back? And this little Saraswati, famous Saraswati on, on Shamsundar Prabhu's shoulders. Prabhupada called her a great preacher. <laughs> Any, anytime there was Sankirtan, she would raise her arms up high and dance. <clears throat> so Srila Prabhupada stayed with us. He could have stayed at the Gaudiya Math, where he served for many years as Grihastha. But he stayed with us in a tent in very cold conditions. And one day he took us to the 
Sri Rupa Gaudiya Math by Rickshaw. Again, Prabhupada served as a rihasta in Allahabad for many years. He had his pharmaceutical business. So he's very familiar with the many people there and the and devotees. And the next place we went was Banaras. There was a festival and Prabhupada was drawn through the streets in a by horses in a carriage. I believe this is the festival where Shaitanya Mahaprabhu met Sri the Rupa Goswami. Again, these are little tiny, tiny film frames from movies. Do you think you'll ever get this close to Prabhupada? <laughs> so here we are at the Cross Maidan Festival in Mumbai, the famous Cross Maidan Festival. Prabhupada had these huge festivals in the major cities in India. You can see the crowds. Every day there would be thousands and thousands of people coming. This is the time that that Srila Prabhupada called that Western sadhu from the very back of the audience to sit on stage with him. We all know who that is. <laughs> Srila Radhana Swami. <clears throat> and there was another, actually a, a couple of more devotees who met Prabhupada at that time. His Holiness Lokanath Swami, and also Dadi Hartha Prabhu. Dadi Hartha Prabhu is from Canada, and he listened to Prabhupada's lecture, but he couldn't understand anything because of the accent. But one thing came th through very strongly, and that was surrender. So he wasn't ready to do that at that time, but eventually he did. And there was a marriage, the last day of the Pandal, between the uh, the groom who is from Sweden and the bride who is from Australia. And Prabhupada called this the real United Nations. And when he said that, the whole crowd cheered, Haribo! <laughs> so this is Subal Swami who did the fire sacrifice for the wedding. And there's this, this one picture, I don't know of any other photos that His Holiness Radhana Swami appears in. Can you find him? On the, on the left-hand side, hard to see, but there he is. Have you ever seen this photo? Yes? Oh, where? <laughs> okay. So Jean, my girlfriend, was back in New York City and she had published a book in her sophomore year in college. And she brought that book. She came in to visit me in India. We met Prabhupada and we asked him, we want to do another project. And that is to take uh, photos of a quaint Indian village untouched by Western technology. And we asked Prabhupada where to go. He said, wherever you go, you'll get your cameras stolen and they will cheat you. <laughs> so then he said, best to go to Vrindavan. Before we went to Vrindavan, we went to Nepal. Uh, we went, we found a, taking our, our art pictures all the way up to 10,000 feet in a beautiful valley. And we stayed in this abandoned shack for uh, about five days. And I brought one book with me, and that was Bhagavad Gita, the original Macmillan. Bhagavad Gita. I gave that to Jean, and she started reading it, amazingly enough. And that's where she first got the inclination that she might be something other than her body and mind, that she might be a soul. <clears throat> so we came back down to Vrindavan, and we started taking our pictures, and Jean was very fascinated uh, by the widows chanting every day in the temple, all day. So she would sit there and take pictures of them, and, and then she was very moved by their faith and devotion. 
And that's, that was the beginning of her transformation from atheist to Krishna, Krishna consciousness. And she, she details her journey in a very wonderful book, her memoirs called Five Years, Eleven Months, and a Lifetime of Unexpected Love. Five years, 11 months was her, her time with Prabhupada. And my time was six, six years, two months, I'm sorry, six years, two months. Yeah, I, met, I met Prabhupada two months before she did. So we participated in help, trying to help Prabhupada in India. We stayed for two and a half years. And I, we were married in Vrindavan. Actually, after the Delhi Pandal, Prabhupada took us to Vrindavan. And uh, Radhana Swami showed up at our wedding. He had come from the Himalayas to meet Prabhupada, and he walked into our wedding. So this is one, we only have one picture of our wedding. <laughs> and that was due to Malati's request to, take, to get Bishaka's camera and take one picture. Srila Prabhupada was there, but unfortunately you don't see him. So Vishaka Devi started taking pictures. And she was always allowed to come up to the front of the walk. Of the walk. And Prabhupada gave us a wonderful tour of Vrindavan. There's little Saraswati again. Rupa Goswami Samadhi. Prabhupada's telling the story of Mother Yasoda seeing the universe in Krishna's mouth. And then he kindly joined us for a swim in the Yamuna. So we traveled with Prabhupada to different cities in India. This is Jaipur, sorry. And then back to Juhu. This is the uh, groundbreaking ceremony for the new temple. <clears throat> so we served mostly in Juhu for those two and a half years. And then we got a letter from Karanda Prabhu. He wanted to make a movie on ISKCON. He asked Prabhupada, should we do that? And Prabhupada said, yes. There was no movies at that time on, on ISKCON or Prabhupada. So Prabhupada actually gave us $16,000 from his book fund to make that movie. So we can understand that Prabhupada knew the value back then of media, of movies. And we can see today, people are just captivated by movies. You know, less and less people are reading books. Books are the basis for sure. The movies are so popular. So we made that first film, Hare Krishna People, and the equipment was very cumbersome. This is the camera, the camera only. It was, it was, uh, we had to put padding over it to keep the noise down. Prabhupada did not like noisy cameras. <clears throat> and this is the uh, tape recorder, separate audio machine that Vishaka Devi used for the audio. And this is the equipment we used, a hand wound, winding the film by hand through something called a movie scope. So very cumbersome and tedious and expensive. 10 minutes of film was $100. So today, 10 minutes of video is nothing. <laughs> so Hayagriva Prabhu was Howard Wheeler. He contributed to the script, great writer. And this is 1973 in Los Angeles, huge warehouse thousands of books being printed. And this is only about six years after Prabhupada started. Books being shipped all over the world. We had our own forklift and <laughs> everything. So sometimes we think that Prabhupada did not have much effect in his preaching before he came to America, but actually had a great effect. Because when we came back to India, we were greeted by the leaders of India in all different fields, in education, in science, in, in uh, politics. 
and they invited us to our home to their homes for programs. So Prabhupada had a huge effect on the leaders. This is the final scene of the Hare Hare Krishna people, Prabhupada dancing at the Bhaktivedanta Manor installation. So my father actually was very sympathetic and he bought us this uh, editing machine, upgraded editing machine, and uh, also a camera. <clears throat> the next film we made was called Brilliant as the Sun. Prabhupada asked for something to be brought to the 1976 Mayapur festival to show that he was doing the work of his spiritual master to the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and printing and distributing his books. So we decided to make a movie about Prabhupada's uh, book production and his translation. And Prabhupada spoke the verse that we follow all the way through the production of the book. And that's this verse, famous verse. This Bhagavad Purana is as brilliant as the sun. We all know this verse. This is the Book Trust headquarters for production of the book production, Los Angeles. And as each step was completed, they would put a uh, yellow mark for all different steps. This uh, devotee was an extremely fast typist. So she would type out the manuscript and put it on this tape. And then Archie Prabhu would insert it in this machine and would print out the text of the pages. Archie Tepardvu is still working at the BBT 50, year, 50 years later today. Archie Tepardvu, key. <laughs> and then the uh, photography for the cover, the paintings, and the paintings inside the book. We follow this one painting all the way through from just the pencil sketch to completion. And then that was printed and developed and then laid out to, for the, uh, to make it the proper size for the cover of the Bhagavatam. All this work can be done very quickly on a computer these days. So technology has advanced huge amount. And then printing and then sending all over the world. And then we included in the movie uh, reviews from different prominent professors from major universities, Yale University, Princeton, Harvard. And finally in the movie, there's the distrib distribution of that same volume with Brilliant as the Sun, that verse, on the streets of Los Angeles. And this is a devotee, Gulpa Vrindabal Prabhu, distributing the book, a very wonderful devotee and book distributor. And he's approaching a businessman, and that's also a devotee we had planted. And then we see them across the street. I was across the street with the camera on the second floor of a building, and they were wired so we could hear what they were saying. And that was the end of the movie. And we took that movie and showed it to Srila Prabhupada in his room on something called a Fairchild Projector. It was a brand new machine and it was a, a uh, like a briefcase. So you could set it up and show the movie pretty much in, in about one minute. So Prabhupada appreciated the movie very much and he asked us to <clears throat> just show it to the guests. Anytime a guest would come in Prabhupada's room, he would ask for that movie to be shown. The next film that Srila Prabhupada saw, there are four films that Prabhupada saw. This is the third one, Spiritual Frontier, and it's a documentary on New Vrindavan the, uh, in West Virginia. So it was a beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful time of year, summer, and we showed all different aspects of the farm. Prabhupada was very proud of the milk production of the cows. And the milk production was, for each cow, approximately 10 gallons per day. That's 40 liters. <laughs> this is a, we had the camera covered with a piece of glass. And then we showed a, a calf being born. 
and then also puris being cooked. And when Prabhupada saw these puris, he rose up out of out of his, his vyasa and he said, "I want one." <laughs> This is the beginning of Srila Prabhupada's palace. It was originally meant to be uh, Govindaji temple. Prabhupada wanted seven temples in Vrindavan. <clears throat> so all the, all the work was done by devotees themselves. Just incredible effort. Beautiful deities are brought up in Vrindavan Chandra. This last shot was taken in a helicopter. I wish I had a drone because it was expensive and a little dangerous <laughs> flying over the hill. <clears throat> so the last film that Srila Prabhupada saw was A Spark of Life. This was commissioned by the Bhaktivedanta Institute, the science preaching branch of ISKCON. It's a 20-minute drama of two students in, in a university. One is taking a biology class and he's hearing the materialistic ideas of how life came about. And then his friend on the left, he's in a religious class, he's studying Bhagavad Gita. So there, he's very fascinated, he's telling his friend about the, the uh, contents of Bhagavad Gita. And uh, the professor is played by another devotee, Damodar Prabhu. And he's giving, of course, the theory how life began from the primordial soup and finally, one cell is formed. You know, the Prabhupada spent so much time preaching on how bogus this idea is. <clears throat> so we show the different parts of the body. And, you know, the muscles, the skeleton, the nerves, the all different parts. And we're looking for the soul. Where is the soul? So in the movie, we show uh, from birth to death through hands, just uh, just shooting, shooting different hands in different uh, situations. And finally, death. And then we, <clears throat> we have a scene uh, simulated like a hospital scene. This is in my apartment. And devotees acti acting as nurses and doctors. And they're trying to bring a, bring a patient back to life with no success. So, And the, the uh, <clears throat> narration is once the soul leaves the body, there's nothing you can do to bring it back. Then there's a graveyard scene with a priest putting the dirt over the body. And finally, the person taking, the, the devotee taking the, the uh, biology class is convinced that yes, life comes from life. How is it possible in any other way? So happy ending. <clears throat> so Srila Prabhupada, this was shown to him in his room in Juhu in 1977. And the members of the Bhaktivedanta Institute were there and uh, they wanted something to defeat the materialist argument that life comes from matter. But we thought if we did that, the film would become outdated because those arguments are always changing. So we decided to base it on the, on the Bhagavad Gita, the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada appreciated that. He said, what has been the response? because I showed it to a Sunday feast audience in Los Angeles before coming to India. And one guest came up to me and said, thank you very much, now I can understand I'm not the body. So when Prabhupada heard that, he said, then it is success. <laughs> that one person. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. This is the end of our presentation. Actually, <clears throat> we have a... Um, a pen drive with all these movies on it. It was produced by Madhava Prabhu of Hare Krishna Media. I've been working with him for uh, several decades. He's very kindly d distributed all our movies for, for many years. So I'll be downstairs at a table if you'd like to look at this 
and uh, take one home. And uh, it comes with a adapter for your phone, for your cell phone, so you can watch it on your cell phone. Very good for air, for flights on airplanes. You can watch them, watch the movies. <laughs> And then this is uh, Madhava's contact information. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Actually, we in our in our two and a half years in uh, India, most of that was served in Juhu. And uh, we heard some talks about Juhu tonight. Were very nice talks. Uh, so that that was actually it was very austere conditions as you all know, but it was probably one of the, the most wonderful time for us because Prabhupada was always very concerned. He was visiting often. He would write letters often, and we were fully engaged, feeling very happy. So that's the secret to advancement in Krishna consciousness: is to please a pure devotee. We ourselves may be useless, but if we can please the pure devotee, then that is success. Any questions? Comments? I think you want prasadam. <laughs> I've taken up too much time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you, Prabhu. And on behalf of the temple management, we are requesting every single devotee present here kindly visit the stall there and have a look at Yadubar Prabhu's this pen drive. And please support this project and please, if you can, please purchase a set for yourself. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Now we'll have Kirtan and after Kirtan there is Mahaprasad for everyone.